Hi, I'm Richard Delaney from Rope Lab in the Blue Mountains of Australia. We've got a website, www.ropelab.com.au, and on that I try and publish a whole lot of interesting information for roping technicians. What do I mean by roping technicians? Well, anyone that's using rope for recreation or for their, their volunteer or professional work. That includes technical rescue operators, rope access technicians, entertainment riggers, arborists, industrial riggers, there's a whole range of us, rock climbers, rock climbing instructors, challenge ropes course facilitators. There's a whole range of us using rope for many, many different things. I find there's a good base level of information and knowledge around the way those systems work. However, there's some fundamental gaps in many of those systems of understanding in that they're based in rules rather than truly based in understanding. With Rope Lab, we regularly run workshops, privately booked workshops and also publicly advertised or open workshops. The things that I explore on Rope Lab workshops are typically friction and mechanical advantage. Now, it's easy to think we've got a good grasp of those two concepts. However, I find that as soon as we introduce some of the common climbing systems, such as the Rapid Ascent Descent, or RAD system, or other systems, Short Rope Ascent in Rope Access, anything where the load is doing the work as opposed to an external hauling party, things get a little bit more tricky. When it comes to friction, I like to have people walk away with two fundamental rules of thumb. One is that any time we have a rope taking a 180 degree bend over a metallic object, like a carabiner, uh, that's effectively a system of one to two of mechanical disadvantage. And similarly, any time we have a rope running a 90 degree bend, either relatively sharp or one that's quite smooth over rock or concrete, we can also treat that as a mechanical system of disadvantage of one to two. Another area I really enjoy exploring is, is particularly for those people working in technical rescue, but also standby rescue and industrial rescue, is the use of artificial high directionals. We're at a really interesting point in time because there are many confined space rescue tripods out there which people are used to setting up over an aperture where there's a worker working in a hazardous environment. If anything goes wrong with that worker, then their colleague needs to be able to lift them up out of that system using the tripod that's established in the lifting system and probably lift them up in a vertical orientation so that they can put them then in a safe place. That means those tripods are typically two metres tall and the other common thing with them is that they have a frame mounted winch. Whenever we have a winch mounted on the frame the resultant force is actually directed straight down the operational line to, to the, the co-worker. In a technical rescue environment, we're used to setting up tripods near an edge for managing a load which is over the edge. And the reason the tripod doesn't get pulled over is because we have a hauling team working behind the tripod. So we have a rope coming in and going over an edge, which gives a resultant force which hopefully is pointing within the footprint of that tripod. Now, there's been a few tripods tip over in the last few years. It seems that perhaps one every six months is tipping over with a live load during training. And I hope that isn't going to continue or even get worse. One potential I'm concerned with is if we have a frame-mounted winch in a technical rescue environment, those rescuers are used to looking at a resultant force within the footprint of the tripod. As soon as we put the winch on the frame, the resultant actually points straight down the operational line to the litter. And if that's over the edge, we'll destabilise that litter unless we have a system anchor at the back foot where the winch is. Another very interesting consideration and one I try and work with is thinking about how much importance we've traditionally placed on having a litter attendant in every operation. My strong preference would be that the default position is to have either no attendant in the system or certainly to look at removing the attendant from the system before we do any edge transitions. It's those edge transitions where we have a moving resultant and that's either because of a luffing frame, a frame that tips, or the situation where we're fleeting the load inboard with differential tension between two ropes. If we've got a horizontal basket, a horizontal litter with a patient in, and the bridle is very compact, then perhaps we can get away with a, an artificial high directional at the edge, which is only one metre high. That could be a gin pole, or it could be any of the traditional tripods, but set up in a short configuration. If it's only one metre high, all of our stability issues are much simpler to manage, and our guying requirements are easy as well because things are so much lower. 